this is an MRI machine and that's me going inside to see what it looks like when my brain hears I'll be watching this is a lie and believes it. I lie and you lie, we all lie. And more importantly, we all believe lies. And no matter who you are or what you believe, that reality is going to be more important than ever this year. It turns out that lying is a lot more complicated than you'd think. It feels good to say lies sometimes and to hear them. And I want to understand why. Why do we lie? Uh, I'll give the try. It's not interesting. Lies? And is there anything we can do about it? Why does Joe Biden make so much stuff up? I will always tell you the truth. Four Pinocchios on that one, and there's no evidence to support it. It turns out that people What's are pretty a bad in detecting what is a lie and what is a fraud. You regret it all. All the lying you've done to the American people. All the what? All the lying, all the dishonesties. And who is that? Lies are so important, though. Correct. I'm on the campus of MIT. I'm about to go into this building where they do research on brain and cognitive sciences. I'm going to meet with one of the world leading experts who's going to talk to me about what happens when lies enter my brain. I'm, I'm Johnny. Hi, Tali. Hey, Tali. Nice to finally meet you. How are you? Yeah. The primary role of ferrous detectors is to prevent the catastrophic, uh, the big things flying into the magnet. Because if you walk in with an oxygen cylinder from about here, it's gone. It's gone. And it will annihilate anything in its path. God, look at that. The keys themselves are brass. Yeah. Oh, my. If I let go, it, it, will it would fly in there. Better than ever. Hey, I'm going to just quickly pause the video to thank today's sponsor. Um, sponsors are what allow us to make this journalism. And I'm really grateful for Trainwell for supporting this video and lots of other videos on our channel. Really, bro? Trainwell used to be called Copilot. Really, bro? And what it is is a platform. Re you that snuck it in there? To just so I would go AFK more frequently using really? exercise science and accountability. So here's how it works it's more likely. Here we go. Uh, so I'm gonna go in there, they're gonna show me images of a lot of different things, and we're gonna see how my brain reacts. We're gonna see what we can learn about how the brain ingests and processes information, what it's looking for, what it cares about. How you doing? Doing great. Awesome. So India or I will talk to you from the control room. Okay. Uh, so this next scan is about five and a half minutes. Okay. Here we go. We can go from the front of the head to the back of the head. Oh my god, this is insane. Information is processed by the brain like primary rewards, like food and water and sex and also what we call secondary rewards, which is money. So the same system, the reward system in the brain that is evolved probably to um, seek food so we can survive is actually used by the brain to seek information. Okay, so we love information. That makes that sense. I now am convinced of. But I'm also learning that we like to believe in lies. But not all lies are the same. They're not all bad. And we actually have some good examples of this. Starting with the gold mine treasure trove from 2004, Mean Girls. Oh my God, she's so annoying. One time she punched me in the face. It was awesome. So number one, a lot of lies are actually meant to not hurt other people's feelings. Like the classic, giving someone a compliment when you really don't mean it. Finn? Titch. It's not good. So adorable. Thanks. <laughs> I hate it. That was the ugliest effing skirt I've ever seen. Or lying to avoid telling someone that you actually don't want to hang out with them. I can't go out. <laughs> I'm sick. But then there are lies that start to become a little bit more malicious, more manipulative. Lying to get gain or advantage over somebody, to hurt somebody. Is that the summation? Yeah, the same thing. Wrong. He was so wrong. I pretended to be bad at math so that you'd help me. I mean, this is why corporations lie to us. Telling us that if we drink this brown sugar water, then we'll suddenly be really beautiful and have a lot of friends. <laughs> Or that if we drink this other brown sugar water, we will suddenly be beautiful social justice warriors who will single-handedly usher in an era of peace between police and protesters. Oh my god. Okay, but even these are fairly innocent. The audio like, you know it'll suck. The, the audio levels, lies. audio The ones bullshit. that I'm worried about are the ones that we tell to protect our tribe. 
or to hurt our enemy, and how easy it is to willfully believe them. There is no doubt that Saddam Hussein now has weapons of mass destruction. These are the dangerous lies, the ones that are becoming easier and easier to make believable. They're the ones that I want to build defenses against, which is why I'm making this video right now. But to Makes do sense. that, I'm going to have to lie to you. I promise I will tell you after the fact when I lie to you. So let's start with a little experiment. Okay, let's set the stage. Imagine your brain looks like this. It's a construction site that okay. is constantly building a massive tower. To build this tower, we collect information from the outside world using our senses. That information is brought into our brain and we use it to build our tower, our worldview. So we're inside my brain right now. And look, it's 6.30 in the morning and because I'm a fan of psychological self-sabotage, I've decided to start my day by opening my phone and seeing what the algorithm has to serve me. Oh, and look, here comes all the information I'm taking in from my social media session. In my little analogy, this information is coming into my brain in the form of bricks. Bricks that are used to build this tower. Huh? This tower is my worldview. It is my reality. The things that I think are true. We all have one of these. But whoa, there's way too much information coming into my brain right now. I can't process all of this and add all of it to my tower. So that's where my inspection team comes in. A bunch of brain regions and processes dedicated to investigating, processing, and deciding which of these bricks are most important. Most bricks don't get much scrutiny because most of the stuff we take in is familiar and the brain just assumes it's true. Like imagine walking down the street and wondering if that There's traffic light was actually real and sitting there and staring at it. Or wondering if your friend was lying when they said they'd meet you at 10 a.m. for coffee. You wouldn't get anything done. All of your brain space would be just processing what's in this room right now. It would be impossible to function in this world if you were constantly evaluating every single thing you saw and felt. So we let bricks through without a lot of scrutiny. Oh, but look, I just opened Facebook and my uncle is posting about COVID vaccines. Look how this information shows up into my brain. This is not a boring or familiar or emotionless brick. It is a big, new, important brick. Uh, 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 it's like the emotional one. And it's a bigger deal for my inspectors because it contains information that either confirms or threatens my deep desires, fears, or core identity. This is the type of information that's more emotional, that's higher stakes. We often remember this stuff and it informs our behavior. And in my analogy, these bricks, these important bricks, are the foundation of our tower the foundation of our worldview. Okay, now that we've laid that foundation, let's do our experiment where I give you some bricks, some true, some not, and you pay attention to what that feels like for you. Are you ready? Let's do this. What? Okay, okay, bricks. Here's a few, listen to this one. Crime is on the rise everywhere, and every place is a possible oh, crime target. Massive. Okay. Now, a few more. Crime is rising around the country. I feel less safe. So, crime is on the rise. And crime is on the rise. Crime is on the rise. Okay, what do you think? Do you believe it? How did you react to this information? Hearing it once and then hearing it again and again. First, let me just quickly tell you the truth. Some crime in major cities did rise in 2022, but has since declined, according to this data from the Major Cities Chief Association. Here's another good data point. The police departments from three of America's biggest cities report that homicides are trending down. The big crime report that the FBI puts out says that 2023 saw a 6% decrease in violent crimes across the country from the year previous, and that cities with over a million people saw an 11% decrease in violent crimes. So this assertion that crime is on the rise everywhere in the US is simply not true. It is um is crimes only the violent ones or the homicide ones? There's there's a there's a lot of crime. But... Not factually accurate. Okay, but my point here has nothing to do with crime rates. What I'm trying to show you is the illusory truth effect. So illusory truth effect is uh, the tendency to believe something that you heard more than once. Okay, let's go back to our construction site for a sec. The illusory truth effect said. is when you hear something once, like that first clip I showed you, 
Crime is on the rise everywhere. And maybe you're skeptical at first. So your inspectors like reject it. It doesn't make it into your tower. But wait, look, there's like a ghost coming out of the brick that slips through these inspectors and settles onto the tower? Wait, what? Okay, but watch what happens next. You're just holding it. I then played more clips with that same assertion. And even as my inspectors kept rejecting it, the ghost of the brick kept getting through. Smoother and easier every time. This would have been- And look- This analogy would have been easier with um, a brick breaker analogy. You know brick breaker? It, the, the brick starts red and then it, it hits it and then it's orange, hits it, yellow, hits it, whatever. And then it, it, it breaks like- The brick is getting stronger until- It starts It kind of looks like the rest of the bricks. And it, oh. Okay, so you hear something a bunch of times and it starts to code as true. And then, and I hate this part, even after Ouch. that information is debunked, like I looked up all the stats, I read all the FBI reports, and I know that that is not a true assertion. Even then, the ghost of the brick still stays around. Wait, hold on, check guys. I don't mean to, guys. The stats, I read all the. Didn't it go up though? True assertion. The stats, I read all the FBI reports, and I know that that is not a true assertion. Even then, the ghost of the brick still stays around. It's still there, and it quietly influences my behavior. Like, I know this claim is false, but the idea of crime is now more pronounced in my mind, and I'm living with increased stress and anxiety about it, even though I'm at a lower risk than I was five years ago. And it's, it's such a strong effect. Okay, hold on. I guess I gotta pause. Jam, sorry, check it. I guess I gotta get boring today. I'm, I'm sorry, you guys. I gotta pause. I gotta pause. Okay, ready? Here's a graph. Okay, very, check this is a very, very important concept. Watch this. Here's a graph, okay? Bing, bing, bing. Okay, here's a graph, and this is this is a 12 years, okay? so 12 months. Okay, this is that, this is that month out of crime. Uh, hold on. Right? Okay, okay. Right? Through the news, let's say, right? And then you look at last year, like the year before, crime was, let's say, 100 crimes. And this year is 95 crimes. Okay, the year is doing good, right? But if you really, if you take this snapshot over here, and you're like, guys, I gotta be honest with you, crime is kinda on the rise. I mean, am I lying? Even though the year says, yeah, dude, it's not as crime. Yeah, because a lot of, of the 95 is more on this part than on this part. So who really cares about this part because it's actually on the rise. So the, the yearly stat is fucking irrelevant. The yearly stat is irrelevant. It's, it's the trends that matter. Fact. Yeah. You know, you do an experiment and you always get it. Yeah. You show subjects a bunch of sentences. Guys, it's like in stocks. It's the trends that matter. Guys, guys. It's like saying, oh, dude. Um, whatever. And some of them you only show once and some of them you show twice. And then you ask them, oh, is this true? Is this not true? They're more likely to believe things are true if they've seen them more mm -hmm. than once. And the reason is that when you hear a sentence for the first time, your brain does a lot of work to process it. So imagine I tell you um, a shrimp's gut is in its head, right? So you're processing this information. Maybe you're imagining the gut in the head. Maybe you're thinking about the last time that you ate the shrimp. Now, the second time I tell you a shrimp's gut is in its last head, pause you don't need- Last pause. I got it. I got chat. I got chat. Guys, for the chat, you guys are all investors today. Fuck this shit. I'm not gonna fuck. For the chat, you guys are all investors, chat. This is the yearly stock one. This is the stock, this is stock one, okay? This is um, um, Tesla fucking eight. Okay, whatever. It's, it's not a real stock. Okay. This is what it did, it did this year. Okay. That was a plus 15%. Okay. I'm sure, guys, I'm trying to sell you on this stock. Chat, buy, guys, buy. Bullshit red. This is bullshit red. Okay. Buy this. 15% up this year. Kind of poggers, right? But then, then, yeah, this guy. This guy is called um, Bullshit Blue. Okay. Okay. Plus 15% this year. 
they, they, they had the exact same yearly look, overall look, right? Chat, I, you only have one dollar. Chat, chat, this is your last dollar. Which one do you buy in? Fast chat, fast. You got to think about it, chat. Fast one. Which one do you buy? See, if you said the red, um, I mean, you're, you're a fucking moron because it was a trick question. Uh, you're a dumb fuck. Uh, mods banned everybody said red. Um, you're buying blue because it doesn't really matter. It's the trend that matters. It's the trend. You understand how that works? So if you're talking about how are things going, chat? How are things going? Do you mean it? It's this year compared to last year in terms of blocks? Well, not really. You're gonna have like a snapshot of life, right? That is a certain distance or certain picture, a snapshot. If you take this snapshot, you gotta be honest, blue is going fucking hardcore. So you have to operate with the trend. You cannot just look at the year, year to year. Need to do as much processing. Right? You've heard it before, so there's less processing. And the way that our brain works is that when there is less processing, there's less surprise, we just immediately, unconsciously, automatically assume things are true. So is a shrimp's gut in its head? It is. It is. <laughs> you can see this in the brain scans. I mean, look at this. Even after being debunked, the misleading information stays in the brain and competes with the good information for your attention. Dissonance. They're both there wanting to be remembered when you think about crime. The ghost is still in your brain. So yeah, this unfortunate quirk of the brain is called the illusory truth effect. The more you hear something, the more you think it's true, and it kind of sticks around even after it's been debunked or corrected. And because of that, people who want us to believe them take advantage of it, repeating lies over and over and over until they start to kind of feel like truth. Like that time when Trump insisted that he had like a massive turnout for his inauguration. We had the biggest audience in the history of inaugural speeches. I looked out, the field was it looked like a million, a million and a half people. This was the largest audience to ever witness an inauguration, period, <laughs> both in person and around the globe. Sean Spicer, our press secretary, gave alternative facts to that. Alternative facts to that. And he just sort of said it over and over and over, even though there was like such clear evidence that no, this was not the largest turnout of all time. But when Trump and his people just say it over and over, people start to believe it. And yeah, I just wielded the illusory truth effect against you in the name of teaching you how this works. I gave you a fake fact, something that isn't true, and that fact is maybe still there floating around as a ghost in your brain. But let me just repeat once and for all that this fact that I told you was a lie. It is not true. The crime rate in the United States is not rising everywhere. Do you understand? <sighs> Sorry. It's just that one of the studies I read so that if I make it emotionally intense, then you'll remember better. Yeah, yeah, but now you sound schizo and now I'm more worried about your state of mind and then the fact that you're schizo, which means that the information you're saying is probably not as valuable. So now I'm on the defense okay, mode. Okay, back to the construction site. I want now since I'm in defense mode, it's, it's very it's defense mechanism. Now I'm, I'm, I'm shut down and things are bouncing back out now. Now things are... That's just what it is. To try to get a few more bricks into your brain. And this next one is the one we have to be probably most vigilant about. It's the hardest one to arm yourself against. Oh look, what a surprise, I'm on my phone again. And this time I'm watching a political video on the internet. I deeply agree with this video. And look at these bricks coming in. They're just breezing past my inspectors. They're getting loaded up right onto my tower. But wait a minute, hold on. These are high stakes bricks, like the important emotional information. Shouldn't they get careful inspection? Wait, what's going on? Why are these bricks getting in with just a free pass? Why is no one looking at these? Yeah, I'm looking at you. Hmm? Hold on, and who's that? Okay, there's a lot going on here. Let me explain. These bricks, we'll call these bricks preferred information. They're kind of like the fancy people at the airport who have platinum status and who breeze through security and get priority boarding, but in this case, priority boarding into your brain. These bricks are bits of information that line up with your pre existing This is a funny video, you wanna know why? Because if, if, the, if he made this initially about, about social media or whatever, the bricks are reversing colors. You're getting more dog shit, more things that aren't real and are selected and are altered than actual truths. 
the things you see on Twitter are legitimately currently not as true as the true things. That's what it is. So you need to reverse the colors. There's more dog shit than actual true things. Existing That's that is a fact. They That's fit a really facto nicely fact. Nicely into your worldview tower. I mean, look at how nicely these are fitting into my worldview. I love this. <laughs> So the inspectors see these bricks arrive and they compare it to the rest of the tower. And if it looks kind of like the bricks that are already there, they assume that it's good to go. No need to waste time thoroughly inspecting these bricks. Wait, what the? Who is this? Who let you in here? Who are you? I'm Dorothy. Ah, yes, Dorothy, AKA the dopamine fairy, who we've decided to call Dorothy because we make videos on the internet and kind of do whatever we want. Honestly, Dorothy's great. She shows up and makes us feel happy whenever we do something good for ourselves or the survival of our species. So whenever these high stakes, emotional bricks just slide through inspection quickly and fortify our already existing tower, she rewards us for fortifying our worldview, for making us feel safe in our beliefs, all without having to use the Confirmation valuable, bias. limited mental resources of the brain. You're making everyone's job easier, so give everyone a bonus. Let's do more of this, please. The result is a good feeling, the thing we all want. Okay, but let's go into the real world really quick and see what this looks like. Booba I'm gonna do makes that thing hard. again where I, I show you information, I put bricks into your brain. These ones are gonna be a little spicier than the last bit. And like on the real internet, some of these will be false or misleading, while others will be factually accurate. I will disclose all of that after the experiment, I promise. What I want you to do here as I throw these bricks into your world is pay attention to how they feel. Do you agree with them? Do you want to agree with them? Does it feel good to agree with them? Or does it feel good to reject them? Does it make you feel angry? Does it make you feel excited? Did you just learn something that you can't wait to tell your uncle at the next Thanksgiving so that you can once and for all prove that you are right and he is wrong? Here I am. Woo! That's it. Janksgiving is on. It's an amazing feeling. Is Dorothy present for you? What pay the attention. Fuck? Here they come. All right, first one, immigration. Look at this tweet. Under the Biden administration, illegal border crossings are way up from the Trump years, reaching an all-time high. Okay, all-time high, illegal border crossings. How did that hit for you? Watch it again if you need to. Next, this Instagram post. It says that Biden has been providing US taxpayer dollars to fund both the Israeli army and Hamas's military wing. This post gives specific details as solid proof that Biden is, quote, funding every angle of this conflict, okay? Remember, I'm gonna tell you which one of these are true and if it's, you know, factually accurate and all of that at the end. Let's keep going. Next, abortion. Here's a tweet that I saw with a video clip that apparently shows Trump saying that he thinks he personally should be allowed to throw doctors who perform abortions in jail and that people should retweet so that everyone knows how dangerous Trump's authoritarianism is. That same clip with a similar caption was posted by the governor of California, okay? I didn't watch the clip, I just read that tweet. Pay attention to how you're feeling about it. Last one, President Zelensky, the president of Ukraine, recently bought two luxury yachts worth $75 million quote, amidst heavy reliance on Western aid, like using money from the West. This was reported in an article that was tweeted by a Republican lawmaker, Marjorie Taylor Greene, saying that American taxpayers are funding deep corruption in Ukraine. Well, the article is writing out of bad faith, right? But it, it's not... It's like not making the connection whatever, but it's writing in bad faith. I'll okay, so that. illegal border crossings, are they at an all-time high? So full disclosure, if you look at my tower, you're gonna see a lot of like pro-immigration bricks. I think it should be a lot easier for people to come to this country. I think we need to fix that. That is like a deeply held belief of mine, given my life experience and what I've seen. And I'm also aware that people use illegal border crossings as a way to sort of rile up the conversation to politicize it, to create fear of outsiders. So I'm pretty skeptical when I see a stat like this that claims an all-time high border crossing and Ooh, that's... Biden is way worse than Trump on this. I don't like the so, warning on this, but I'll keep watching. My natural inclination was to not believe this, to reject it outright and say, like, you know, this is probably misleading. It turns out I'm totally wrong. This data is absolutely solid, reported from the Border Patrol via the Washington Post. 
this is an accurate graph. Whether I like it or not, I should let this brick into my tower. It's not going to change a ton about how I think about immigration and what I hope policymakers do, but it's true. It's factual. It's the truth. It's actual. I need to let it in. I mean, so I mean, you. you guys, I just feel like dumbing down this to the fear of outsiders, it's a little diminutive uh, language. It's kind of underplaying, under whatever. It's, I, don't, I don't think it's um, cautious to this use that type fact. of language. If you're someone who is very critical of the Biden administration and how they've handled immigration. It is that? Yeah, no, it isn't. Like, whether, whether having proper documentation, making sure people can be tracked, making, making sure that people can be... Uh, uh, just everything, the whole, the whole, the whole thing, and you're gonna just say, "Oh, you're just, you're just, you're just scared of outsiders." You may have let this in without even thinking about? twice, because it was preferred information. It confirmed your worldview, and it probably slipped in. Next up, Biden funding every angle of the war in Gaza. Okay, when I read this, I saw the stats on the right, and I sort of was like. Yeah, this is maybe true. I've been yeah, yeah, tracked as in having a social security number, a fucking passport ID like that. Whether if if your neighbor right next to you was a fucking quadruple murder, I think that's something that you should be allowed to know. Like, I don't think that's. Oh, but my my uh, my privacy. If if it's somebody that this, you don't know nothing about, yeah, I get it. A lot of them, most of them, are probably chill, right? What the? It's the ones that aren't that is the problem and just diminishing that that threat is ridiculous it's 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 insane quite critical of how the u.s war machine tends to give money and weapons to all sides of conflicts they've done that many times it wouldn't be surprising to me if this was the case here so i kind of let it slip in without a ton of scrutiny another brick to confirm my worldview that we have a overly militarized foreign policy but no, once again, I'm wrong. So, so, guys, some... so, guys just says, so it's about fear. Let's remove the problem of the people that live near the border, at the border, and let's go with you instead. I'm going to do you instead. You have to take a flight tomorrow, right? And they decided that we, cannot, we trust the people. We, can't, we don't have the funding to fucking really deal with this shit. We're going to remove the scanners. We're going to remove uh, uh, all the fucking um, all the machines that scan people. And you can get onto the plane without any security checks whatsoever. You can just walk in there with your luggage, right in, and just and just seat yourself because they, they removed it, right? Well, how what do you feel about that? What do you feel about that? Now you start to is that is am I using fear? It's fear. Well, no, I think I think it's a it's a it's a reasonable thing. That all it takes is just one person, one thing. And if you don't do your due diligence, that that level of likeliness that, it's, that something's gonna happen skyrockets so don't do that some facts in here but overall this post is misleading yes the u.s does give aid to palestinians but it's humanitarian aid it comes in the form of emergency shelter food relief items health care mental health psychological support and it does not go to hamas's military wing like the visual in this post asserts. One thing that is true is that the US does give a lot of money and weapons to Israel for their military, which they are now using in their war in Gaza. But again, this post is misleading. It is- You're saying I use fear. This is using fear. If, so, if, a, if a plane explodes with a bomb and everybody dies, then they say, people die from a bomb. You're gonna say, they're using fear and information to fucking auto rile us up, dude. They're using fear, they're using fear. Brother, you're a fucking idiot, man. Shut the oh my fucking god, you're a Misinformation. Loser. It is not giving me a factual picture of what is going on here. But I kind of let it slip in again. Okay, that's two in a row where my confirmation bias just sort of let a couple bricks in. See if we can do better here. Okay, let's get to the last two here. Did Trump say that he personally should be able to throw doctors in jail if they perform an abortion? Proof of his authoritarianism. I mean, this would not be surprising at all to me. Um, Trump has all kinds of authoritarian impulses and says crazy stuff all of the time. So if he said that he personally should be able to throw a doctor in jail, I would be like, yeah, he probably said that. Okay, but watch what happens when you actually watch the clip. Questions about abortion, but do you think a doctor should be punished who perform abortions? Uh, I'd let that be to the states. You know, everything we're doing now is states and states' rights. 
And what we wanted to do is get it back to the states, because for 53 years it's been a fight. And now the states are handling it. And some have handled it very well, and the others will end up handling it very well. And those are the things that states are going to uh, make a determination about. Okay? So, he didn't say that. He did not say the thing that that tweet said. What he said is still problematic to me and deserves scrutiny. But now, it's all muddled because there's misinformation involved. Someone has totally mischaracterized this in a way that draws the attention yeah. into information wars as opposed to actually being able to Guys, scrutinize. I don't even think about this. I'm, I, I'm take us about this because uh, Brendan Andy, uh, in terms of like federal slash state, I don't even know how that works in the United States. Is that a bad, is that problematic? how Trump thinks about abortion and states' rights. That's what's so toxic about misinformation. When I see it on things that like I in spirit would agree with, I feel so disappointed that the person sharing that information didn't stick to the facts, which would have been so much more powerful. <laughs> so once again, I fell prey to some confirmation bias. Boy, oh boy, it's a hard world out there. Last one. Did President Zelensky use U.S. taxpayer money to buy two yachts worth $75 million, as reported by Marjorie Taylor Greene, a Republican lawmaker? Like, uh, as reported by Marjorie Taylor Greene, a Republican lawmaker. Like, no. Like, I immediately rejected this. I was like, you do not speak truth. You are not trustworthy. This feels outlandish. Guys, I I'm, tagged I'm it as false right away, and I was right. But... This is totally 100% made up. In fact, even on the tweet, if you zoom the, down, the language you'll see not... that the link she posted comes from what is widely known as a Russian propaganda website. It's a totally made up story. But this factless brick slipped into the minds Magic of the gathering? Republican lawmakers, who, by the way, by design, we're thinking about Ukraine and whether or not we should give more money to them. And in the backroom deliberations, while they were talking about it, one reporter notes that they said they are corrupt and they're maybe gonna buy yachts with this money. It worked. The brick got in and the funding was delayed. Not just because of this, but stuff like this, misinformation contributed to that discussion. Now, the funding did eventually get passed as we're recording this like just got passed so anyway the point is this misinformation can make it into the brains of people who are making our laws and by the russian government no less so that my friends is confirmation bias it is the lovely feeling you get when you're met with information that confirms your worldview whether it's true or not if it confirms your worldview makes you feel safe in your and your group's identity, you're gonna be way more likely to accept it without giving it any scrutiny. We're also more likely to go out and seek information, opinions, and data that confirms what we already believe. Mm -hmm. And on the other hand, we're less likely to believe information that goes against what we already believe mm. and less likely to go and seek it out. That's what we gotta be we. careful about. That's the dangerous stuff. More doctors smoke camels than any other cigarette. Let's just switch gears for one there second. There is no we. A very important question, which is why? Why does our brain have these faulty habits that make us so susceptible to lies? And the answer is that for a lot of years, that's what kept us safe. Believing in myths and stories was actually very beneficial to humans for most of our history. It allowed us to organize around leaders who we thought had special powers or to believe that there was a man in the sky who would reward us with good weather, which meant healthy crops, which was literally our food source, all if we obeyed the same rules. Anything that conflicted with these beliefs, these myths, these stories was a threat to what kept our group cooperating you in large what? numbers. You know what? I disagree. Sorry. I'm going to go. I chat. Guys, guys, guys. I, I don't, it's not even about religion. I disagree. It's not because the system works that it could have been better. Okay. It, if, if you invest and you nurture a system that um, fundamentally works, right? It can work better than what has worked. Does that make sense? Which for a long time was our survival. What is true is not always the thing that will get us a reward and help us avoid harm. Sometimes 
but not always. So we have beliefs that could actually lead to positive outcomes despite the fact that these beliefs are untrue. So for example, believing in God. So in some locations, geographical locations, believing in God can actually be, make you more likely to get a job, perhaps, in some states or some countries, right? Um, in many situations, believing in God will get you social support, right? So it doesn't, regardless of whether, um, you know, it's, a, it's an accurate or inaccurate belief, right? Believing in God can actually get you reward and help you avoid harm and therefore in it's why they usually lace like a uh, uh, recovering addicts and, and a lot of, uh, and a lot of um, stuff with uh, with faith right because it it does work in a lot of scenarios in a percentage that they deem okay it's worth the trade-off and then yeah they lace it it's yeah I think I think that's really fun in the in a program that somebody is a recovering addict and has support housing food opportunities i use the word lacing it they lace faith into that program i use the word properly i i did they lace religion and belief and faith into the program and it has a a, a multiplier in li likeness of success and increase your survival so our brains adapted to seek information that promotes safety within our group social cooperation not empirical truth told to us in statistics and nuanced data sets. But eventually we learned how to measure the world and produce shared facts. That allowed us to thrive in new ways, but our brains unfortunately didn't suddenly upgrade to crave facts and truth. We still have the old hardware. We still want to feel safe in our group like the old days. We want visits from the dopamine fairy, whether that comes from truth or lies. And as you all know, that feeling is exactly what we all have now. A few years ago, we invented a new information delivery system that custom delivers this feeling of safety for us. Only the preferred bricks. All the ones that of slip right shit, through. Then. The ones that earn us a visit from our favorite fairy. It's incredible technology. From the comfort of our own home, I can connect with people who have the same preferred bricks as me. We can build our towers and build bridges between them so we can share our preferred bricks with each other, giving each other bricks that fortify our worldview, confirm our safety, and God, it feels good. It's what every human brain wants. You're safe here. And whenever someone else with a different kind of tower shows up to the neighborhood and tells you in 280 characters that- Algorithms should be modular, like a fucking, like a fucking, like a PSU on your on your computer. You should be able to say, I want 70% of things that are kind of like um, within this group, group of interests or things that, that I agree with. And then the 30% are new ideas that are coming in. Because right now I feel like they just plummet you with dog shit that furthers them and what they want. And, like, and, and it ends up being your circle. It's the circle that I chose. It's a circle that you chose for me. That's what happened. You... And you say, oh, yeah, but it's the things that you like. Yeah, but based on the what, on the things that you gave me initially, like, it doesn't make any sense. It's, it's self-fulfilling bullshit. That all of these bricks that make it up the modular. foundation of your tower are wrong, and that you're an idiot for building your tower that way, you and everyone in your tower neighborhood get to fire arrows at them from afar. Oh, look, and here comes the fairy again to reward you for dunking on this enemy, this threat allowing you to further bond with your group who helped you. If you think about how we evolved, it was mostly experiences, first experiences, or hearing the experience of or watching, you know, people yeah. that are close to us, right? Yeah. Now, of course, we can go online and we can get this information, epistemic knowledge in the forms of like text. And of course, the, the, the difference now is that it's also infinite. Mm. And we can also search for specific things according to what we want. So now we are directing what information we're consuming. Mm. What do I Google? Who do I follow? None of us are immune from this. I do this too. It is incredibly human. We crave that feeling that our group is right. Our tower is firm. We are safe. And now that message is confirmed to you day and night with bright buttons and flashing lights. It's social, it's new media, it's free speech, but really it's a feeling of safety and comfort and we've mastered it. Good for us. 
Okay, but it's not all dooming. I don't get my bricks on Twitter, so I don't give a fuck. We hear this all of the time, and it feels like our brains are broken, and social media is has hijacked us, and there's nothing we can do about it. But I actually believe in human brains. I mean, look what we've done. If there's anything humans can do, it is transcend our natural impulses to find more enlightened ways to work together and to create real safety and real connection, not the cheap and easy stuff. So I think we can do this. We're just at a moment in time where it's gonna take some work. So as we all go back into the trenches of the internet that is now laced with misinformation and lies, let me give you a few tips that I have started using uh -oh. to navigate this world. Number one, pay attention to your bricks. Just pay attention, like we've done today in the video, how that information hits your brain, how you want to reject it or accept it without scrutinizing it, and why, what that feels like. I think that's step one for all of us. I know I am sharpening my sense as I've reported the story and thought about this more. I'm gonna walk away from this with a much keener sense and desire to put some friction in that often frictionless experience of letting bricks in that confirm my previously held worldviews. So pay attention. Number two, remember how we actually change someone's mind. Most of us every day see some article or tweet or post that we deeply disagree with and that we think is based off of lies or misleading information. I will tell you, and there's now decent science on this, that one way to not change that person's mind is to yell at them and tell them that they're wrong. In fact, new studies are suggesting that trying to prove somebody wrong, especially in an internet setting, actually has the opposite effect, forcing us to re-fortify our towers. The more we Real. yell at each other, the more we polarize, and the less we talk to each other, the less people's minds change. <laughs> So if you're someone who has those types of arguments or leaves yeah, say those you, of like comments, it's a hit at me, it's a hit at you. It's a hit at me. If I prove if I prove something wrong over and over again, and you sit and say, oh, you, 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 you. I mean, it doesn't matter. You're you're still wrong. You always want to. It's on the internet. Just know that the wrong. only person you're serving is you. You're not serving anyone else. You are serving that feeling that you get when you leave that comment that confirms your identity. You do you, but you're not changing anyone's mind. Number three, and my last one here is. The well, I'll keep doing it. Then. I don't. I'll keep doing it because what else are you gonna do? What else are you gonna do? What else are you gonna do? You're just gonna say, "Oh yeah, <coughs> I agree with this misinformation." Um, this guy's. Uh, they're saying some lies about this person. Oh yeah, it's fine. Whatever. No, which this is kind of a big one. <laughs> Tall order these days. The more I think about it, the more I realize that it's quite silly that. We have this expectation that all of us are going to have these refined, well-argued opinions about every hot-button issue of the day. No one has that, but we all kind of pretend we do because we're afraid to say, I don't know or I don't understand. And yet, some of the smartest people I know are the ones who say, I don't understand, who speak less, who listen more, and who are curious. Arriving curious is an instantly disarming energy, and it opens you up to like me. understanding and learning, and ironically, helps the person you're arguing with understand you better. This doesn't mean agreeing with everyone you talk to or being so open-minded that you just let everything in. You should have your morals, you should have your- I ask questions. I, I made the pattern to ask questions to Hassan and Destiny, and I listen to the answers with a little bit of a back foot on um, whether, okay, yeah, and, I, and you guys punish me for asking questions like I'm doing something wrong. Every time I ask questions or I inquire, you guys act like I, sh I should know better. Like, like I, oh wow, that, how do you not already know this? And it's like, like, like the biddle, biddle little me for fucking trying to get information. Ridiculous. Suck my dry nuts. They're dry right now. Suck them. Suck them. Suck them. Your red lines. But Fuck you! Sorry, that, sorry about that. Try about to that. Sorry, I got off the rails about that. with the people who read that information that you disagree with and believe it and why they might do that. You might not get the short-term buzz that you get when you argue and you yell, but I promise that arriving curious with I don't know actually fosters long-term security. So, that's it. That's the video. <laughs> guys, guys, let me give you a trick, okay? It's not even manipulation, it's a trick. It's a trick with, with other, other people. 
arrive curious, even though you're not completely curious, and actually hold an open mind and see what your inner locator, the person that's giving you the information, how they act. If they're like overly eager to go, oh, and it, they're low, you usually have some motive behind it. A lot, a lot of times you're gonna see, they see a vulnerable position, right? And they're trying to attack that by looking full of dog shit. It's why some of the people, I'm not gonna say who, I'm not gonna say which one of um, Asan or, or uh, Destiny, it was Asan. I keep a back foot. Because I got, I got a chill. As we head into this election, we're going to hear a lot of lies. People are going to want us to believe things that are not true. I hope we can pay attention and see this information for what it is. And I hope through curiosity and understanding, we can get back to a world where our bricks start to look the same. We can agree on some version of fact and reality. I don't know if that's like two years from now or 20 years from now or 100, but I believe that we humans are capable of doing it. Even if the incentives of media and social media algorithms don't want us to, I think we can. But it's gonna take more vigilance of what goes into our own minds than ever before. Yeah. And so this is especially a problem when people have like outrageous lies. If you think about like the big fraudsters, yeah. right? Why do people fall for these big frauds? I wish it gives a better, a, a better thing at how do you attack misinformation, if not for proving it wrong. It's like saying, it's like saying, if somebody says two plus two is one and you say it's four, well, people are not going to listen People will say, you're gonna say, fuck you, whatever. Okay, cool. Now I know that people are fucking brain dead. How do I approach that? How do I get a, what is the solution out of making sure people know that it's four if it's supposed to? What is it then? I, you never have any, what's my answer to this? You don't. You don't, bruh. You don't. You don't. Instead, turn it off and um, go to some cocaine. Anything else? Okay, here it comes. Yo, this is X. X on yeah. the beat, yo. Okay. Why my voice as well? That S. Anyone knows that boy? I don't know, he's just so soy. Anyone knows that boy? I don't know, he's just so soy. Again, that was pretty good. Cool.